Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, April 29th, 2022. Happy Friday. Today we're going to be taking a look at the state of Georgia and the Senate election that is set to occur this November between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker, the Republican frontrunner for the primary there, winning uh, potentially by upwards of 50 to 60 points across the state. Now, looking at the election polls that we are exhibiting today, uh, or showing you, we are pretty much looking at Raphael Warnock in comparison to other potential Democratic candidates. More specifically, we're looking at Stacey Abrams and the other Republicans that are running, David Perdue, Brian Kemp, and of course, Raphael Warnock's own opponent, Herschel Walker. Now, the focus of this video is on Raphael Warnock for a main reason. That reason being that he is the incumbent Democratic senator and he is the main one defending his position and his seat right now. The thing about David Perdue and Brian Kemp is that they are in a somewhat contentious primary, and I'm not really uh, here to speculate about how that primary is going to go in this individual video. In addition to that, the governor election seems to be going in a different direction than the Senate election to quite a bit of surprise. Looking at the results here, you're looking at sometimes victories for Kemp of five points and Warnock by five points, meaning that there's a significant portion of the population here that is backing Brian Kemp while also backing Raphael Warnock. And that's really where my main question comes in. Why is Raphael Warnock performing a lot better than Stacey Abrams? And what does that mean for Warnock individually as an electable senator? So taking a look at the numbers here, we're looking at uh, a news poll from Survey USA. And they pretty much polled the Republican primary and in both races, the governor election and the Senate election. You can see for uh, a good reason why I am much more confident in the Senate election Republican primary than I am in the governor election. You're talking about Herschel Walker up by 56 points, whereas Kemp is only ahead by 25 as the incumbent Herschel Walker is not. In the Georgia governor's race here, we're looking at numbers that show Brian Kemp defeating Stacey Abrams by five, David Perdue only by three. Raphael Warnock, however, defeats his Republican opponent by five percentage points. It's quite a shock. It is something to be said, you know, that this is a poll here that is showing the Republican Party ahead on one end, but not on the other. And it doesn't exactly match up with what we've seen from other polls. For instance, you can take a look at the state of Georgia. Let's go ahead and just look at all polls in general and see what we're finding out of the state. Well, I just showed you what happened there, and we're going to ignore the Republican and Democratic Super PAC-sponsored polls, meaning we're looking at uh, nonpartisan polls. And what you will find here is that there are many instances where you find the same exact pollster showing, on one end, Raphael Warnock losing by four, then Stacey Abrams losing by five and by eight points. It makes sense, but it's starting to show a consistent trend. And this most recent Survey USA poll really exemplifies it and does defy a bit of expectation but there is probably a lot of reasoning behind that, and we can definitely explore that in this video because there is definitely proof showing that Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock are in closer races than Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams or than David Perdue and Stacey Abrams, or more so that they're more right-wing, more Republican-leading than the Senate election. Continuing down, what you will find is that other Senate election data shows Herschel Walker ahead by three. You have election data from WIC, not entirely sure exactly who they are, but it shows Walker ahead by one, Purdue ahead by three, Kemp ahead by six. A consistent, consistent trend that shows Herschel Walker doing worse than other Republicans and Raphael Warnock doing better than other Democrats. And we've seen many instances of this before, where you start to see a closer Senate race, then you start to see a widening uh, uh, governor race for either candidate or a closening up governor's race, but a widening Senate race. It, in general, what we can capture from this is that they generally should be voting together in unison. But we do tend to see some fall off between the Senate election and the governor election, and it has not really been super explored until this video. And I think the most recent Survey USA poll really goes to show just how extreme this actually is. Because a five point lead for a Democrat on the same exact group that's showing a five point lead for a Republican tells us that this Democrat individually is doing a lot better. Not necessarily the Republican, considering that Georgia has a very red history and is very much a swing state in a non beneficial year for the Democratic Party. Looking at Raphael Warnock's recent election results, I think this isn't super unpredictable. I think Raphael Warnock was a very strong candidate back in 2021 and partially in 2020. The reason why I'm showing you the presidential election results is because I want to use this as a point of reference. The presidential election results exhibited a significant shift from 2016 in many main counties in the Atlanta metro area that turned Georgia into a blue state, voted blue for the first time since 92, and Joe Biden won by 0.23%. It was an exceptionally close race. They had multiple recounts, and what you found was that every single time, Joe Biden ended up winning. 
But 0.23% is nothing super substantial by any means. In fact, it's one of the closest types of elections that you could actually have. It was less than half a percentage point, which meant that an automatic recount was triggered. And you also found that the Republicans here were unwilling to accept the election results. Uh, that combined with Joe Biden and the Democrats campaigning well in the state of Georgia led into the runoff elections, where you saw the Georgia runoff race go to Raphael Warnock by two percentage points. The reason why I'm using the last election as a point of reference or the last presidential is because Raphael Warnock nearly got exactly what Joe Biden did in terms of overall vote count, only about 200,000 votes off. Now, keep in mind, that means turn out was exceptional, extremely, extremely high. And he won by two percentage points against Kelly Leffler, the incumbent Republican senator. And when you take a look at the shift from 2020, what you find is that nearly every single county, with the exception of seemingly uh, five, six here, that shifted towards the right, what you're finding is that, let's see here, you know, 0 0.8 points, 0 0.8 points, whereas other counties, you're talking five points more Democratic, five points more, four points more, four, four, four. Just one county in specific really jumped out, Webster County, which got six points more Republican, but about a thousand votes in total across that county. So generally speaking, across the state, Almost every single county shifted towards the left. And Raphael Warnock did that because he was a good Democrat. He was a powerful and popular one, and he did exceptionally well. That was accompanied by John Ossoff's victory against David Perdue, where David Perdue actually underperformed his uh, general election results. When you take a look at the uh, race here, David Perdue got 2,462,000 uh, votes, 617. When you take a look at the runoff, 2,214,000, 2, which I get it was lower turnout, but 49.7% in the original, 49.4% in the eventual. And what that meant is he saw a drop off in support. And John Ossoff saw a seriously significant uptick. I mean, had this been a normal election, David Perdue would have easily won this race, or not easily, but would have won this race without really much contention. You're talking about a 1.8% margin, but it ended up being uh, a lot more than that. It ended up being a lot more than that. Um, that in, in terms of switching votes and in terms of uh, a shift in margin, it ended up shifting by about three percentage points across the state. So very impressive for the Democratic Party, but none more impressive than Raphael Warnock, who went from 33 percent of the vote to winning this actual election. And I think it really speaks to him as an electable candidate and as someone who was actually able to outpace Joe Biden. I don't think we really understand exactly how significant this outpacing is. When you have Democrats who just won control of the House and won the White House, the checks and balance came down to a red state. It came down to a state that Joe Biden might have won, but again, for the first time in nearly three decades, uh, and actually uh, 28 years. And, you know, keeping that all uh, into consideration when we're looking at the election results, Raphael Warnock winning by two points is all more impressive, nearly 10 times Joe Biden's margin of victory from the 2020 presidential election. So when I pop onto Survey USA and I see that Raphael Warnock is up by five, I'm not seeing it as something that I necessarily believe fully. I think a five-point lead for a Democrat in Georgia isn't believable, but I do think that a lead isn't too far out of the equation. I have been, uh, said on multiple occasions that I think Raphael Warnock is a very strong candidate and could win in the state of Georgia. I wouldn't say personally that I'm confident he would win uh, more than I am confident that Herschel Walker will win, but I think these numbers really speak to that general trend that we are seeing and the possibility that Warnock could win, while also Kemp or Purdue could win the governor's race. Uh, the fact is, every single poll that you see where they pull all three of the races, the Senate race ends up being the most pro-Democrat. Regardless if that means that Walker is up by three or Warnock is up by five, you're looking at it in comparison uh, to other polls. So on one hand, Kemp could be up by five, Purdue could be up by three, and Warnock could be up by five. We've seen other instances where Kemp is up by eight and Walker is up by one. And it's amongst the same polling group. I am very interested, though, to see that there is so much crossover vote. I mean, you're talking about 10% of people here that are either unwilling to, uh, you know, vote for Herschel Walker, but are willing to vote for Kemp, or unwilling to vote for uh, Walker, but are willing to vote for Kemp. Um, it, it is interesting to see that there is a, a bit of a drop off here between Republicans across the state, because it shows that people are not exactly going to vote all together for one party. Obviously, there's a lot of people who are going to vote Republican no matter what. There's going to be a lot of people who might have voted for the Democrats in 2020 that are going to vote Republican no matter what, simply because they're unhappy with where the Democratic Party is right now. But there is still a significant portion of the vote here that is showing that the Democratic Party is doing better in the Senate election, and that means there are Republicans contributing to that. Um, overall, what I have found also 
is that these questions are very, very uh, different. I would say, you know, just six questions here doesn't really provide us more insight into what is actually happening. Maybe that could be explained beyond just simply the polling numbers um, and, and just normal demographics. There is a lot to explore as to how this could even happen, that Warnock can be up by five and Kemp can also be up by five. I'm quite literally baffled by this, as I'm sure you can tell from this video. But one thing is clear. Warnock does better than Abrams. In every single poll where they're up against each other, Warnock does better than Abrams. And it makes a lot of sense. Warnock is a tried and tested candidate. And here's the factor that matters the most in congressional races. Incumbency. Warnock, as the incumbent, does well. Kemp, as the incumbent, does well. Purdue is within the margin of error, largely because he is not an incumbent, but still very much has the name recognition. I think Raphael Warnock, at this point in time, could still very well win the Senate race. I don't think it's this done deal, you know, uh, never going to come back race for him. But I do think that the Republicans still maintain their lead. This is just one poll that shows that Raphael Warnock is in the lead. You take a look at other ones, you have some that show Walker up by four points, three points, one point. I said I was going to ignore the grassroots targeting Republican pollster here. And while that is very much within a specific margin of error, depending on the poll, I think the Emerson College one isn't through the traditional 3.5, but could be within the margin of error. It tells me that Walker still has a slight lead, but in comparison to the other race, it's not as large as you might think. It's certainly not as large as you might think. But I do think that as we get closer and closer to the regular election, to the general election, that polls could get closer. That Warnock could end up in a position where he is more competitive than he is now with the GOP. He was always going to be extremely competitive, but by that sense, I mean more electable and more likely to win than he is right now. A lot of that is dependent on Joe Biden's approval rating. A lot of that is dependent on our generic ballot. Our generic ballot really hasn't changed much. You take a look at it and you'll find that the Republicans are ahead by three. That really hasn't changed. It's been two to three over the past couple of months. Uh, the Joe Biden approval rating is hovering around negative 11. It's been at negative 11 for months now, quite literally. Uh, so we're really not seeing much change nationwide. But for some reason, Georgia is telling us some pretty interesting numbers. And it definitely deserves a lot of discussion. Um, based off of what I've seen here, I think this might be a fluke. I think Warnock being up by five is a fluke. But I do think that we should expect some more numbers to come out of Georgia, and that could provide more context. Um, generally speaking, we should caution away from treating individual polls as this gold standard, as this end-all be-all for the election, because truly Survey USA has been right and also has been wrong, and we can't blindly trust this poll. I have just more so been infatuated by the fact that there is a significant portion of the voting population that is voting for both Kemp and Warnock. But the factor of the incumbency makes it a lot more believable and a lot more common, simply because people will vote for incumbents. You take a look at any real congressional race, and the majority of the time, overwhelming at that, the incumbent wins re-election. Even in Senate races, even in competitive Senate races, incumbency is a very large factor. That's why pickups are such big opportunities and so substantial, because they rarely ever occur and they could truly determine the balance of power. Looking at where the race stands on the Senate map here, it's probably not going to shift. A toss-up characterization is what's safe for real clear politics, and they're likely going to keep it. Uh, it leaves us in a position where we have about seven toss-up races. Georgia could also be in a position where we could start to see, uh, oh, that's interesting, it's going to make me go ahead and verify. Let's go ahead and fix the puzzle piece here, where it could get closer or it could get larger. Right now, the average is 0.5. I would argue that it's probably going to get larger than this, but which direction? I'm not entirely sure. If Biden is to recover, we could end up right back where we were in 2021, where Warnock was in the lead. If Biden's approval rating gets worse, we could end up in a position where Walker is now more in the lead. But if we stare where we are right now, it looks like we're seeing some pretty conflicting data, but Raphael Warnock will likely fare better than Stacey Abrams in her down-ballot governor's race simply because Warnock is the incumbent, and he also is someone who has already been elected statewide, despite many of the circumstances and many of the uh, you know vote counts from 2020 really not being on his side. And what I mean by that essentially is that if you combine the Democratic vote from Georgia in 2020 in the special election, the Democrats fall behind the Republicans by about two points. Same thing here in the other election. Well, now we're in a position where the Democratic Party seems to be ahead by five, but of course that's not a solid deal. Looking at the past, though, I will say that, you know, Warnock 
definitely came from behind, definitely came from someone who was not expected to win this race. Uh, both Ossoff and Warnock were viewed in many cases as sacrificial lambs, as, you know, just who the Democratic Party is putting up, but no real chance of victory, who end up winning, uh, end up shocking the entire nation. So that victory there, I would say the Democratic Party should be very proud about. They should use it as a means of, you know, advancing their own gains for 2022. And the numbers don't look like they're going too far to Herschel Walker's side like you might expect, especially considering that Biden is down by about 11 points nationwide. And when Warnock won the election, he was up about seven to 10 points nationwide, a very different national environment, a very different Biden environment. But Warnock is still doing well, especially compared to other Democrats. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.